I want you all to take a step back with me to a different time, a time where people uploaded the most esoteric works to YouTube and would find internet stardom almost overnight using these things. It was considered the Wild West of YouTube, and for the most part, nobody had any idea how or why it worked, but many people found instant fame by uploading things that they never would have guessed would have resonated with such a large number of people. And one thing we have almost consistently learned from this through situations like that guy with the glasses, as well as various other ones such as the situation around Leafy is here and Great A under A, is that people were not exactly who we expected them to be once this had started happening to them. Now for the most part, things like this are from a different time, an antiquated time. They don't happen anymore. People don't rise to fame that quickly. But what were to happen if somebody actually had that explosive growth and didn't exactly know how to handle it? and didn't turn out to be who we thought they happened to be. To that end, I will ask you now to direct your attention towards Draconator. Draconator, for those who may not know, is an animator in the Warrior Cats fandom, who had a rapid rise to fame throughout the past year. As you can see from their social blade, from April 2016 until about April of 2018, their YouTube channel was virtually dead. It had very little growth to show compared to what it has now. But when you show April 2018 up until now, there is an explosive level of growth around their community, around their fan base, their subscriber count, gaining 70,000 new individuals watching their channel. Now, while many would flip at that level of growth, one thing most people recognize is that there is a new responsibility that has become present, which is that thousands upon thousands of people are listening to you, and they're adopting exactly what you have to say. Whether they are willing to look into it or not, they're willing to just take you at your word. Now, most people would look at this and think, I should be a little bit more responsible. I should make sure that what I'm saying is actually fucking true. Draconator, however, decided to use these fans as a cudgel with which they may bully and threaten people who are much smaller than them who don't have such support. Now, many of these came in various fashions, such as unsubstantiated callouts on Twitter against people they did not like, and ranging all the way down to simply telling people in their comment sections to get hit by a train. I'm going to make it very clear, we're not going to just simply discuss what they're doing now, although that will be coming up. What we're going to discuss is all of the signs that were pointing that this may be the outcome we would eventually see Draconator face. Now, one aspect of Draconator and their content that really resonates with that audience is the fact that they're a member of the LGBTQ community. If you were not aware of that, I have absolutely no idea how you were not aware of that, considering Draconator loves to fucking throw that out in front of everybody every chance they get. They love to flaunt their sexuality and their identity as though it's something that everyone needs to have consistently shoved in their fucking face. And God forbid you ever get tired of Draconator shoving that shit directly down your fucking throat. Because if you do, if you voice anything about how you are a little bit annoyed that this seems to be the entire personality they have, you're going to get a call out made about you, about how transphobic you are. Now, I suppose it's absolutely no secret that Draconator will weaponize their gender identity and sexual orientation, but I think the incredibly interesting part is when you pair it with this particular clip, as well as this particular Tumblr post. Hello fans and frenemies, Nate Draconator here, and today I'm going to talk to you about my 10 uh, least favorite warrior cats. Five is gonna be Crowfeather, and I'm sure you all expected him higher on this list, but Crowfeather's trial was really good, what can I say? The thing about Crowfeather was, until Crowfeather's trial, I felt that Crowfeather was mean, and bad, and mean. I feel like most of his character and personality was mean, and he never really got punished for that ever. Like, he got a lot of screen time, the narrative really liked him, he randomly fell in love with Leafpool, like, that didn't make any sense. I'm like, it all was really lame, and I felt like he got way too much screen time for a character who never did anything particularly nice to anything, anyone, or particularly interesting to me. Number three is going to be Apple Dusk. You all know how I feel about Apple Dusk. I don't need to get too much into Apple Dusk. Apple Dusk cheated on his wife, and he cheated on Maple Shade. Um, Maple Shade specifically mentions in Chapter 10 that Reachine is at a level of pregnant that she would have had to have been pregnant before Maple Shade's kits died. Number one is Thistleclaw. 
Every other character, I'm totally willing to have, like, debates and discussions. Thistleclaw sucks. Huh, well, that's, that's fucking super interesting, isn't that? <laughs> it's just like, it's like they really think everyone who's straight or cisgendered is actually fucking evil. I mean, when, uh, when you pair it with everything that they happen to say, calling everyone who says anything critical of them a bigot for whatever reason, whether it's because they're calling them a misogynist or transphobic, well, well, gee, that really starts to paint a little bit of a picture about how Drake sees the world and how Drake sees people that don't fall within the LGBTQ plus umbrella. But okay, I guess I can forgive that. At least they're willing to learn from their mistakes, and when somebody's willing to point out something that can be done to fix things in the future, they'll stick by whatever they happen to say to them. If they say something doesn't work, they'll stick by that, and they won't try to adopt it later. At least we can it, it, it just take solace knowing Draconators, oh wait, never mind, because here's Buttons in that situation with Diana Draws saying that they can black out the names of a minor so they won't be exposed, and then Draconators saying, well, that doesn't always work. But, when it suits Draconator's needs with the Spunk Eye situation, they did it not only once, but fucking twice, with two miners who were younger than the miner in that situation. <laughs> well, Jesus Christ, Drake. Uh, how about, uh, is a little bit of consistency too much to ask for from you, Drake? Like, uh, what's going on here? You, you okay? You need a hug? Although, given Drake's penchant for blocking people on Twitter, as well as blocking their YouTube comments and even deleting them, I'm not shocked that they wouldn't understand it's a bad idea, because literally everybody who could possibly tell them, hey, maybe you need to just rethink something, you know, they get shut out immediately. Drake, I just want to make this very clear to you. Blocking somebody isn't a universal mute button. They can still have an opinion. All you're doing is proving that you're so fucking fragile that you can't handle anyone saying literally anything, even down to something entirely constructive. But now that we've gotten through the uh, potatoes of this, why don't we get into the meat, what everyone came here for. We're going to talk about the situation where they actually sent lewd images to a minor. Now, I'm just going to go over the spark notes of that situation. Evidently, there was another situation with another artist, and this miner had something critical to say of Drake. Drake made an inference. Mind you, it was an inference. The person did not imply it. Drake simply jumped to the conclusion and didn't seek clarification. Now, Drake made an inference that this was about that situation. They sent lewd images to that miner and called them a turkey fucker in the process. And what was the miner's crime, dare you ask? Well, it was the most the most terrible thing you could fucking do to anybody on the internet. They called Draconator a fucking slug. That's literally all it took. That's that's all it took. <laughs> Jesus Christ. A slug, really, Drake? Like, oh my god, I can this is this is fucking this is fucking new. Granted, that's not the situation in its entirety. However, like I said, I'm not here to give you the deep lore on that situation. What I'm going to do now is just read you what Drake had to say about that situation now that they're being called out for it. I haven't been sure what would be the best course of action after the recent events. I have concluded that writing this document might be the best option. I temporarily deactivated my Twitter while I tried to figure it out, but it's back up now, and this is what I would like to say. I seek to be honest, transparent, and clear to the best of my abilities. This document is in no way intended to be pushy, manipulative, or guilt-trippy in nature. It also doesn't intend to blame anyone else involved in the controversy. If any of the phrasing makes it seem, makes it seem so, it is completely unintentional. Now I want you to take that kernel of what I just said and stick it right there in the back of your mind and just let it incubate for a little while, because that's going to get pop pop popping like some Orville Redenbacher pretty quickly. So let's just continue. I got caught up, yesterday, in arguments about Spotted Fire 25's controversy. I had a screenshot of their fur affinity that I believe cleared up a misconception that was created by the controversy. I was in DMs with multiple people about this, and every time I would ask if they wanted to just see the evidence and decide themselves. Then, if they said yes, I would ask them to confirm they were 18. At one time, I was talking to the person involved in the issue I'm writing this document about. 
I thought we were talking about the Spotted Fire 25 controversy, but now I realize I had mistakenly inferred that. Now you can kind of see why I used the word infer earlier, as in Drake decided to actually jump to this conclusion. There was no clarification, and this person was not making a direct implication that this was what they were talking about. Drake, this is why you need to actually ask what the fuck somebody means when they're actually speaking to you, okay? At one point, they seemed disappointed in me, and I had been under the impression that this was stemming from the same thing everything else was, the Spotted Fire 25 controversy. Okay, Drake, shut the fuck up, okay? Because honestly, you are just trying to make it seem like you're so fucking innocent right now because, oh, I came to a really reasonable conclusion. No, you fucking didn't, you piece of shit. There's so many fucking things to be critical of you for, as I've laid out in this video and my last one, that there's no reason you would have to come to this fucking conclusion or act like that it's, that it's the only conclusion somebody could be critical of you. Stop fucking lying to people, you goddamn asshole. So I asked them to elaborate, and they gave a response that was very well spoken. Interesting fucking defense. If somebody has a decent understanding of the English language, well, goddamn, there's no way they can be a minor. Are you fucking serious, Drake? Like, are, are you serious right now? Is this, is this your laser target defense? I'm a fireman, not a laser technician. <laughs> now I'm a laser technician. While it didn't mention the spotted fire situation specifically, I inferred it was about that. And I'm also repeating my points right now, because I'm essentially as dumb as Leafy is fucking here, and this is all I have to offer people. I'm going to tell you right now, that, that last bit right there was a little bit ad-libbed. I kind of inferred it. <laughs> I inferred it myself. That's just a, that's an inference. You're going to have to forgive me for that. I made an inference off of things that weren't actually, you know, spelled out. You know, I jumped to a conclusion. I'm sorry, everybody. So then I sent another message trying to explain why I believed there was a misunderstanding, explaining why I believed my position was more than justified than they believed. After my message, the next time I looked at their Twitter, while waiting for a response, I saw they had posted a Photoshop picture of me. Being upset, I decided I didn't want to talk to them anymore. Drake, if you're trying not to come across as guilt trippy, you're doing an exceptionally poor job considering you're trying to actually rationalize every single aspect of what you're doing thus far. You know, you're trying to make people, like, see your perspective instead of actually addressing the situation pretty unbiased. Like, it says a lot about your character that you're willing to state, Oh, I'm not going to be manipulative or guilt trippy, and that's an accident. Knowing fully, being fully aware that this could come across that way, and then still writing this in a way that comes across that way. Like, like you're aware that this is something that can be seen this way. So you have to put some kind of fucking disclaimer. Putting a disclaimer isn't going to suddenly make it okay that you keep constantly trying to rationalize every aspect of what you were doing. Y you understand that, right? It doesn't fucking do that. At this point, I should have just blocked them and moved on. What I did next was a mistake I thoroughly regret. Now I seek to be honest about the situation and not downplay the reality of what I did. Uh, okay, so apparently now we're being honest. Now we're deciding that this is honesty hour. That's fucking great. So I guess before then you were just sort of like, just trying to, you know, temper everyone's expectations so that they were a little bit on your side, had a little bit of sympathy for you. Because um, apparently now you're making the statement that we're going to be honest. I mean, I thought this was an honest thing going going into the whole thing, but you know what, I, I, guess, uh, I guess I'd be asking a little too much from you, Drake. I misread their Twitter about where they listed their graduation year, 22, and mistakenly thought that that was their age, as in they were 22. In addition, they had been so well-spoken before, I was truly under the impression I was speaking to a 22-year-old. Hey, do you remember that time, like, a, like a couple sentences ago where you said you weren't going to try to downplay what you did? Yeah, those were good fucking times. What happened to those, Drake? Under, and only, the impression that I was speaking to an adult, I opened the chat again, sent the image evidence without asking them to confirm their age, or if it was okay, and blocked them. Now hold up there, Chief. Something's not really, really, really connecting, because every single person you sent any of the evidence to, you directly asked them beforehand if they were at least 18. Um... I'm sure some of them probably had it written in their bio that they were over 18. So why is this suddenly a different case? Is it because you didn't like this person? Because you wanted to be right? You didn't care about what the consequences might be? Or if you might actually be speaking to a minor and you might have misread something? You just wanted to be right. You wanted to feel valid. That's the truth of the matter, Drake. I think you're being very disingenuous with the way you're writing this. 
Now, some of you may think that I'm reaching just an, an, an irrational conclusion with that one. Well, to that, I'm going to direct you to this clip from my Drakenator video that came out in April. So there was an accusation that Nate had apparently levied against me, which is that I am transphobic, which was based off of a cropped screenshot and removed the context of the entire conversation by and large, which is necessary to see why this is untrue. Not only that, but upon discussion with people who actually DM'd me about this, people who were originally on Nate's side, they understood my point and my position once I had explained my situation to them. So to start with the context of that accusation with the cropped screenshot, that was born off of a thread where I added Nate and I also added my boyfriend because I had seen over the past day this conversation unfold and escalate. I had added my boyfriend because he was starting to get very, very, very aggressive with the situation, and I added him to tell him to please calm down. I added Nate so that I could ask them if I could have a conversation in direct messages. This was the direct message I also sent them to try to reach out, to verify that I, in fact, did want to resolve things and find an alternate solution if possible. Let's continue, though. I'm sure it gets better. This was not, as many have been led to believe, out of spite, hatred, or anger. Well, gee, I wonder where they got that fucking impression. Could it be because you ended the communication by calling the miner a turkey fucker? I think that might have had a part to play in that one. But, uh, you know, what, what do I know? I'm just, a, I'm just a transphobe, and you can mark that down, right? Nor would I have done it had I known they were a miner. My intent was to just hand them my evidence and say, fine, here, I'm done, and leave without further engaging them and evidently to call them a turkey fucker, but I guess that's besides the point. Moving on. This was a mistake I admit to and wholeheartedly apologize for. I should not have sent unsolicited NSFW evidence even uh, to an adult, more so unknowingly to a minor. If I could undo this action, I would. But no, guys, this document's not meant to be manipulative or guilt-trippy or make them try to get sympathy from people. No, this is... This is none of those things, because you have to understand, if they could go back and fix things, they would, because they just said so, while somehow apparently not understanding that that's a very manipulative and guilt-trippy thing to fucking write in this apology, when they're already aware it can come across this way. God, you're a fucking idiot, you know that, Drake? It was maybe 10 or 15 minutes before any someone else messaged me. Okay, so we're very aware that you understand timestamps then, so I guess we kind of just reaffirmed everything I was saying in my previous video. Um, apparently they had tweeted about being 14, meaning that I had exposed them, a minor, to NSFW. I was shocked, horrified. I ran to unblock them, delete it, apologize, but the damage was done. Drake, you're telling this like you're some kind of fucking LARPer, like you're playing fucking D&D &D right now and you're the fucking dungeon master. You're, this is, <laughs> I can't believe this shit. Like, you understand that, you understood earlier, you understood well enough that this could... This whole process could come across as manipulative and guilt trippy. Now, what that what that implies is that you took great pains to not make it seem that way, but it's clear that you were just trying to put some kind of fucking disclaimer. At this point, it's so wildly fucking clear that I don't think I'm going to point it out further after this one, but it's so clear that you were just putting that disclaimer to try to save face so that you could be just have a blank fucking check to be as manipulative and guilt trippy while saying, no, guys, I didn't mean it. I was just trying to explain things. Jesus fucking Christ, Drake. God, you're... I don't even know what to fucking say anymore. <laughs> you can't undo something like that. I was not sure how to correctly address the situation publicly, so for that time, I remained silent. This seemed to justifyingly frustrate people, so I tried to construct an apology, but riddled with my own issues and thoughts. This was a mistake. Which part of that was a mistake? The apology where you were riddling things with your own issues and thoughts? Or the part of it where you just kind of remained silent and hoped everything would fucking go away? Which it appears, uh, based on your on your YouTube comments section, how you're just trying to sweep this under the rug, it appears that that's kind of a, kind of a reasonable thing that would piss people off, you know? You're kind of just not addressing something really fucked up that you did and actively trying to make sure your bigger audience on YouTube who doesn't have Twitter is trying, is, is not aware of that. You're trying to make sure that they don't ever know that you fucked up. This, this is this is exactly why it pissed people off, you piece of shit. Maybe that had a part to fucking play in it. The fact that you're trying to tailor the situation every which way you fucking can, like some kind of fucking wannabe publicist, so that that way nobody has to know, or at least the smallest amount of people who can possibly know, do know about your fuck up. 
Like, if you, if you really want to be honest with people, if you really want to apologize, fucking own it. Fucking own what you fucking did, you piece of shit. This was a mistake, because I now realize it came off as manipulative and or guilt tripping, but that was never my intent, and I apologize to everyone who thought so. See, this is a great, this is a great point right here. I apologize to everyone who thought so. They don't admit that this is what they were doing. Instead, they indirectly blame you for coming to that conclusion, which, which mind you, they want forgiveness for coming to a conclusion. But they're going to also put all of this on you for coming to a conclusion at the same time. You see where this is sort of like falling apart, where it becomes a little bit hypocritical. They want you to forgive them for coming to a conclusion, but they're somehow in this indirectly blaming you for coming to a conclusion. Like, this doesn't fit. This is, this is an incongruous line of reasoning. Deleting that and trying to isolate myself from potential to argue with anyone was obviously a mistake. I tried to make another apology, shorter and neater, but it came off as too vague. Eventually, I tried to apologize to the minor in question again. I asked them if there was anything I could do, and they said they didn't know, but that it was late and they were tired. I asked if they just didn't want me to contact them again, and they said yes, so that's where that stands. The reality is that I should not have assumed they were an adult, and I should not have assumed that even if they were an adult, it would be okay to send them an NSFW image. That's not up for debate. I made that decision, and it was the wrong one. I was careless, and I sent an NSFW image to a minor by mistake. I can't take that back. I can only apologize and hope that the damage I have done can be mended. I seek forgiveness from the affected parties, especially the minor in question. I will work on improving myself so that something like this never happens again. I ask for another chance. Drake, why do you deserve another chance? That's my question to you, and it's a sincere one. I want an answer to this question. Because from what I can tell, based on the fact you're continuously deleting comments on your videos about this situation, you're just trying to sweep this under the rug. You want to minimize this. You want people to forget. You're not trying to get forgiveness, because if you wanted forgiveness, you would own it. You would let people say what they need to, to get this off their fucking chest. You wouldn't be silencing people just because you don't want anyone else to know that you did something wrong. Now, the last two paragraphs of this are mostly just them saying that they're not going to participate in discourse, and as well as trying to figure out what else they can do to fix this, and that's, that's all fine and good. But at the same time, Drake, if you really wanted to fix this... You wouldn't be trying to censor your YouTube comments section so that there's no trace of this. Because you have 1,300 followers on Twitter, fine. So it's a very limited audience compared to your 72,000 subscribers on YouTube. Drake, do you not understand why what you're doing is wrong? Like, do you, do you even have the capacity to think? That's, my, that's a sincere question as well. I'd like an answer. Do you have the capacity at all for rational fucking thought? Well, I guess to end this video, I'm going to leave you with a thought. They decided back in April that I was transphobic for an accident because I accidentally used the wrong pronouns when referring to Drakenator. So, by their logic, I'm going to make a statement. Drake, you have sent unsolicited lewd images to a minor. Because of this, congratulations, Drake, by your logic, you are now officially, unequivocally, a sex offender. Please show some support to the artists uh, who did my character stills, and my social media links as well as theirs are in the description below, and their social media links are in the pinned comment, just like normal. I'll catch you guys later.